the big lie is that home ownership equals financial freedom. People, home ownership does equal financial freedom, but not for you. Most people don't like to be lied to, but there is a huge industry that makes their living lying to people every single day. I'm going to read to you six headlines. This is on a Google search, and every one of them are a lie. I'm going to tell you why in this video. Millennials, secure your financial future with home ownership. Want to be financially secure? Buy a house. Secure your financial future when you're a home owner. Secure your financial future. Buy a house. Home ownership is key to financial security. Home ownership builds wealth. Lie after lie after lie. And here's why. When you go to the store to buy something, let's say this watch for instance, you go to the cash register, they ring it up for you, and they tell you how much it's going to be, and they add a little tax to it, and they say, Mr. Customer, this now belongs to you because you gave me the amount of money I wanted for it, and you paid your tax, so now it's yours and they hand it to you. When you buy a house, that's not the way it works. You pay the price for the house, uh, and among other fees, and you pay the tax. However, what they don't stress to you is you got to keep paying the tax. Every year, you never own that property. You never own that property. Who owns the property? I guess the government owns the property. Because if you think that you went and bought, let's just say, let's make these numbers easy. You bought a house for $100,000. Good luck with that. Uh, and you paid all your fees and taxes and you got the deed on it. You have the paperwork. You have the paperwork on it. If you fail to pay the tax on that property when it's due, they're going to take your property. So if you think you if you really ever think that you own that property, don't don't pay the tax on it. Tell them, "Oh, I've already paid the tax. Right here it says I paid the tax on it." Try that and see how that works for you. Because they're going to come snatch it out from under you. They're going to sell it to somebody else that will pay the tax on it. And if that person doesn't pay the additional tax on it, they're going to take it from them. And it just keeps on going. You are, you may be the homeowner, but you're renting that property. And as soon as you fail to pay the rent, which they call a tax, they're going to take it from you. Try it. That's just one problem with home ownership. And is, this is just me talking, this one problem. And I'm gonna cover uh, my last um, experience that I have with uh, being a homeowner. I'm gonna cover that with you and show you some numbers that'll blow your mind and why I will probably never own another house. All right, so let's say you have saved up your money and are able to buy your property, including the building, the land it's on, everything, get your deed, one-time purchase, and you got the deed in your hand. You gotta pay tax on it. Tax never ends. Unlike the watch that you just bought and paid tax on and you get the watch take it home Tax never ends on property You got to pay the government a property tax 
every year. Of course, if you finance that property, and you put, you know, a big chunk of money down and you pay so much a month, then you're paying for the property monthly and you're paying for the tax monthly and the insurance monthly. They'll take a little piece of this money and put it in what they call escrow and uh, the escrow payment will pay that annual tax fee and the annual insurance on that property. Now the stuff you can save up for and hopefully plan ahead to pay are things that come along in building maintenance such as you know painting the house, replacing the roof, replacing and maintaining the systems like the air conditioning, uh, you know your all of your your washer, dryer, refrigerator, oven, your your microwave, uh, dehumidifier, whatever you've got as far as systems go, the heat and air air conditioning, those things are going to break. They will require repair. They will require upgrading. Your house may settle. Cracks, you know, may appear in the drywall or the bricks. That stuff has to get repaired. Very expensive. Uh, pest control has to get done or vermin will take over. Um, the house has to be cleaned so there's not only the chemicals and materials you have to buy to clean the house but you have to invest your time to clean the house. Other emergencies that crop up, whatever those are going to be, those are going to be as required and required more often than you would really want, I'm afraid to say. The other things are the land maintenance. You know, your your lawn, cutting your lawn, doing your landscaping, um, all the tools, machines, and chemicals that go along with taking care of the lawn and the landscaping. You also have to maintain those tools uh, and machines. They require oil changes or replacement when they wear out as required. The main thing is tax never ends. And that's the part that really ticks me off. Tax never ends. Okay, I've got a lot of stuff written up here. I'm going to have to explain it because it's not written to where it'd be explainable just by looking at it. We purchased a home and five acres of property for $270,000 and we financed it for $2,100 a month. That does not count utilities. None of these figures counts utilities. At times, the electric bill alone could approach $300 a month or more. So just keep that in mind. All right, $2,100 a month. 12 months a year, and we were there for 10 years. We paid out in... Our home loan, in the loan to the house payment, our mortgage, we paid out $252,000. We didn't own the home at this point. We still owed $140,000 on the home when we sold it. In 10 years... We, and this is not all inclusive. This is just off the top of my head, really fast numbers, and they're low. They are lower than actual what they actually cost me. We found termite and rot damage that had to be repaired. We spent $45,000 on that. Now, did we have $45,000? No. We had to take out a home equity line of credit to get uh, that money to repair the house that we had just bought. So I'm not even counting the interest rate on the home equity line of credit in these figures. Like I said, these are low. Uh, I put a shop on the, on the property, assuming that I was increasing the value of the property. It was a nice shop, 30 by 50 with heat and air. Nice, you know, anyway, about 30 grand. Uh, we had to buy equipment to maintain the property, you know, a, a, zero turn more tractor all the implements that go with it and i'm roughly guessing twenty thousand dollars worth of equipment we had to uh in 10 years you know there's things that you're going to upgrade in your house we put in a new floor painted it inside and out 
both air conditionings failed. We had to get them replaced inside and out. About $30,000 in repairs there. So, if I take the monthly house payment, the monthly mortgage payment, times 12, 12 months in a year, times 10, the amount of years that we were there, $252,000. And I add up these items, it comes up to $377,000. We sold the house after 10 years for exactly what we paid for it, within plus or minus $5,000. So that was a wash. We did not make anything on the sale of a house, and in 10 years it did not appreciate. It went down in value. So we got, um, we still owed $140,000 on the, on the property, so we had to take the money that we got for the sale of the property, put that towards the, uh, the, the price of the property, and we ended up pocketing after fees, after the realtor got paid and all that, we ended up pocketing, pocketing about $105,000 in cash after the deal was done. So, for us to live in that house for 10 years, ended up costing us $272,000. That means we did not gain, you know, we, we, we didn't walk away with anything. That's just what it cost us to live there. 200, I'm sorry, $2,266 a month is what that cost us. And you might as well say that was to rent the property because when we walked away from the deal, we didn't own anything, we didn't, we didn't, you know, we didn't have anything. This is taking into account what little bit of cash we got out of the deal, but that's not a profit. That's just, that's not even recouping losses. I mean, this is, this is what it cost us to live in that property, basically renting it a month for 10 years. And that does not include the utilities. Our overall um, cost you know, $2,100 a month plus utilities. I mean, we were looking at around be between um, probably in the neighborhood of $25 plus $100 a month to actually squeak by in that property, realistically. You know, um, so is there a better way? You betcha. Hold on to your hat. Unlike a home, which would be very difficult to go out and buy outright, an RV is not so difficult to go and buy outright. Save up, make your one-time purchase, pay your tax one time. A, at least in the case of a bumper pull travel trailer, and that's what I'm referring to here, you pay the tax once and you get a permanent license plate. You never have to register the vehicle again. Your plate is permanent. You never have to pay tax on that vehicle again. So this is paid for, that's paid for. Insurance is annually. Um, mine is about $320 a year. Maintenance is very light. So far, uh, you know, without crunching the numbers, I could easily say, you know, of course it's as required. Whatever pops up, you got to deal with it. But I'm spending, um, I would say, less than $300 a year in maintenance. That's all the chemicals, uh, anything that breaks, I'm re re replacing it or repairing it. And honestly, I, I've been here two years now and I don't think I've put $300 in the whole thing yet. So this is probably more like $150 a year. Land maintenance, not applicable. I rent a spot and with the rent, um, I get the spot, all the utilities are paid, the garbage pickup is taken care of, the land maintenance is taken care of. 
So that not only gives me um, time, I don't have to cut the grass, uh, I don't have to do any landscaping, I don't have to do anything with the yard, it's all taken care of. Um, it frees up hundreds of dollars that I would have invested in all of these things if I had a house instead of an RV equals freedom. Freedom and money in the bank. The big lie is that home ownership equals financial freedom. People, home ownership does equal financial freedom, but not for you. For the lender, the bank, the realtor. Why do you think real estate agents make so much money just because they were able to sell a house that the bank owns? It's crazy. These people are making, you know, let's just say 6% off the sale of your house. And that's a, that's a really good paid salesman. Several years ago, I had some jobs over in... Uh, on the other side of the state and uh, in Mississippi. And I stayed in this um, particular motel. I, I really liked it. Once I found this place, I really liked it. Um, there was a, they served, a, they didn't just serve, you know, breakfast. I mean, it wasn't, you didn't, you didn't go out there and get some donuts and a bagel and coffee and a juice. It was a full blown like, uh, breakfast bar with anything you'd want the fruits the vegetables the meats, you know anything and um, In the afternoons they had uh, you know an, an open bar I mean you didn't have to drink the alcohol you could drink whatever they had I mean it was there was uh, a Little bit of food and just anything you want to drink out there So I got to looking sitting down one day. I wish I had saved it in my phone, but I actually did the calculations. If you didn't have a, uh, a mortgage to pay, you could live in that motel and all of this, all these things that I've been talking about that are erased now would be taken care of cheaper than I was buying a house. And it blew me away. Because the one thing that you are going to lose when you buy a house is time. The amount of time that it takes to maintain a property is enormous. I should say you're either going to lose time or money and a lot of it the um the service industry in some of these well-to-do neighborhoods that i work in is huge because the people that can afford um those nice houses the ones that actually can afford them and they're not make believing that they can afford them they want their time of all the things that they do they work hard all day to make all that money they want their time and the only way to get it is to buy it so they have they have service people in there all the time. There's people, you know, cleaning their house, maintaining their house, maintaining their yard, doing everything for them. So when they finally come home after beating themselves up all day to make that money, so they can they can pay these service people to do all this stuff for them. They have time, but they're worn out. What else are they gonna do? So it's a uh, it's a mess. I mean, it, once you once you wake up and realize out of this out of this whole house that you've got, you know, ours was twenty eight hundred square feet or whatever. You had this you had this this big house with all these rooms in it, two floors, and you know uh, all. All kind of, uh, you know, the garage and, and all, you had all this stuff. 
most of your time, if you break it all down and just look at the kind of kind of realize what you're doing, you're sleeping, you're cooking, and you're hanging out in the living room, and it's probably not even enough living room to to amount for the amount of space that you have allocated for a living room. So um, what you do when you when you decide to, to move into a, an RV, travel trailer, fifth wheel, whatever you want to call them, is you take away all the things you don't need you move this space to here, you move this space to here, you put a tongue on it, and that's an RV. Okay? These things, I mean, you got slide outs. I've got three of them in mine. They blow out. You've got, you know, you've got your 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 bedroom. You've got your kitchen. Anyway, there's there's plenty of room here. I have more than enough room in a travel trailer. It's 37 feet long. I have more more than I need. Once you get through your head that you're killing yourself so you can have stuff you're gonna realize that this is the way to go all of the expenses a month the utilities the lot rent everything all inclusive here where I stay is four hundred dollars a month Forty-eight hundred dollars a year. That's two times the amount that I was spending on a mortgage to live in a house. If I don't like my neighbors, I can back my truck up to this thing and pull it wherever I might like my neighbors. If I don't like the scenery, I can pull this thing and move it somewhere else. The flexibility that you get by living in an RV is worth the price of admission. It's not for everybody, and I'm not trying to tell you that it's for everybody. I don't want all of you out here to be my neighbors. I'll take a couple of you, but um, give it some thought, because the amount of money you can pocket, just do it for two years. Do it for four years. I've been here two years, and it's like, man, I, I really can't see me going anywhere else at this point. But if you um, if you think you could stomach living in an RV for two, three, four, five years, the amount of money you could save by not owning owning a home is enormous. I mean, you could really give your um, your retirement a boost. Um, Newlyweds, oh my gosh, that'd be a test for you. You're all, you're newlyweds. You're probably gonna be hugged up all the time anyway. Get an RV and put that extra money in a retirement account. And be millionaires when you're 45 years old. There's an idea. Anyway, you got any questions, comments? Leave them below. I appreciate you watching.